Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about steam pressure relief valves, a little safety feature built into uh, small uh, live steam models uh, and large ones in fact. But basically it means that if for whatever reason the blockage obstructs uh, the, uh, the exit of the steam through the working components or if there is simply too much steam being produced that can go through those working components because of the, uh, the natural regulation that those components afford uh, it allows it to blow off just like the uh, pressure relief valve in your pressure cooker stops it exploding which as I'm sure you'll agree is an important feature. Now these mammoth ones are uh, very very uh, easy to, uh, to understand but it's always easier if you actually have one to look at. So what we've got is we have a threaded section that fits into a quarter inch, uh, what are we, British Standard Fine BSF uh, thread on the top. That's nice and easy. There is a little cap, a little mushroom shape on a, a central spindle with a little uh, uh, rubber o-ring on it. They're freely available as replacement parts because as you can see on this, which is still awaiting full restoration, they degenerate over time and squish down. That allows leaks. Um, on the bottom, we have a spring. And then down below that, on these mammod ones, they're actually crimped. That prevents you from applying any more tension to the spring because, of course, if you were able to squash the spring right up, it would never open. So these ones have a built-in safety feature. Now what I'm going to show you here is how I approach uh, these um, small models uh, and make tamper-proof, uh, and it's very important to make them tamper-proof if, uh, if you're following this method, um, steam valves for a matter of pence, very, very cheaply. Okay, So there's really nothing to this. There's a spring, a couple of washers, uh, and a central mushroom, really. Now... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use common components that are freely available um, all day long um, and we're going to put one of these together uh, that can be quickly and easily assembled in a way that cannot be tampered with. Now this is the way that I build these. I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way. I'm sure there's lots of different ways of doing it, but this is effective and as I say, it can't be tampered with. Okay, so for this exercise, we're going to need a three millimeter machine screw we're going to need a couple of nuts, again, 3mm. We're going to need a couple of washers, again, 3mm. We're going to need a spring. These are 4mm by 15mm, uh, freely available through eBay and so on, nice and cheap. Um, and then we need some kind of uh, bushing uh, to actually hold it all together. And I'll come to this in a second. But that is really all of the components that we have going on in the uh, original professionally manufactured ones with one exception of course we need the uh, the little rubber o-ring as well now i will put links in the description here uh, to places that you can get all of these components all of the steel parts need to be stainless steel but that isn't the problem that it used to be so uh, i picked up this box of uh, stainless steel nuts bolts and screws of which there is 1080 pieces as you can see uh, one two and three mil um, really, really handy. Sorry, two, three, and four mil. Uh, it's really handy little set. For this kind of stuff um, and contains everything you could possibly need uh, to to build these little models. Um, now, the other thing that I have used here, uh, and I've put a step on this, but you really don't have to. That's completely optional. It just makes it a little bit easier to put the thing together. All I've got is a piece. A brass bar, I just picked that up at a local, local hardware store, um, with a hole drilled at the end of it. Now you could do that freehand um, by basically sticking it in a vise, drilling a hole at the end of it with a drill, a normal hand drill, cordless drill, and then just cutting a piece off the end. The step is a convenience. The step just makes it easier to assemble afterwards. You'll see that in a second. Okay. But um, very, very easy. You don't need the step. You don't need a lathe to do this. You could just cut the end off a bar, drill a hole at the middle. It doesn't even have to be right in the middle. It just looks better if it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the bolt and we're going to take a file to that bolt. Okay. And we're going to file off about the top half of the thread. Okay. So literally just file that down until you end up with one that looks like this. Okay, so that 
is necessary to allow the spring to slide freely. Now, you could do this with lots of different components. This is just how I do it. As I say, super convenient, dirt cheap. I'm gonna take the bushing, the little uh, piece of uh, eight mil in this case, um, brass bar. I've taken it down to seven mil for that section and the hole in the receiving piece is seven mil, but you don't have to do that. As I say, there's other ways of uh, assembling this afterwards, but I'm making this so that it can't be removed very deliberately and I'll show you why in a sec. Also, because this is going to be soldered in place, I'm not going to put the little rubber uh, O-ring on just yet because it'll melt. I'll pull this up afterwards and put that on over the top. So again, there's method in the madness. That's why I've gone for a small head in comparison to the original um, mushroom style. It just means that you can retrofit these and bearing in mind that this is going to be soldered in place, it also stops you uh, being stuck should you ever need to replace that o-ring okay so we're going to put a washer on i mean this is pretty straightforward stuff you're going to put a washer on we're going to put a spring on and put another washer on and then we're going to put two locking nuts on now when i say locking nuts i mean nuts that pinch up against each other and wind this on until the spring is compressed not massively compressed this this allows you to change the tension this is another reason why we've uh, filed off the top end of the thread there is because it prevents you from actually tensioning this too far um, and I, I know some people over the years certainly it's mentioned in Tubal Kane's book on building simple steam engines um, if you over tension these of course it means that the uh, the spring is fully compressed and if you over tension them it means that the uh, the o-ring cannot work it can't actually move out it's all locked in place so you want the spring to be compressed but not overly compressed and remember when you're doing this that there's going to be a little bit of extra space taken up by the o-ring okay now at this point just get a, a pair of pliers or a couple of small spanners and just nip those up against each other feels about right okay and this is now going to be soldered into the uh, the component. Now, I, I would usually have a pipe sticking out of this course and this drilled through both pieces but just to show you what's going on this is where the step comes in handy. If you've got that step it means that when you come to solder it in it's very very easy to just fill in the gap around the edges and get a super clean joint. Okay but what's going on inside is that the uh, the spring is set to the correct tension, it's locked off here, it's all stainless including the spring itself uh, and so basically that is a safe pressure relief valve that cannot be tampered with um, by any kids or whatever who may be of a mind to try and increase the power of the model by introducing some danger to the setup. Okay so hold it on one side, slide it over the top um, and then with a pair of pliers or whatever just pull that up and it'll pop in place super quick easy and very very cheap also you can set the tension on this to whatever you want you can have a really low pressure model have it a little bit higher if you like um, but unlike the pre-manufactured ones which can only do one pressure you have a little bit more control. Now I'm not saying that that's a good thing in being able to turn the power up, what I'm saying is that's a good thing in being able to turn the power down so that it blows off steam sooner rather than later. This is actually for quite a big model. If you use it on something like this, a really small one, it might be overpowered. So you could actually be doing damage to the, uh, the setup um, before it has a chance to blow off. Now if you want to, you can create a bushing, put a tap on it, that can go into an insert in exactly the same kind of way as that, exactly the same setup. Downside of doing that is that you would be able to unscrew it, if you were of a mind to do so, and tighten the threads up to a point where it's actually dangerous, which is why myself, I prefer to solder these in place so that fiddling fingers cannot over uh, pressurize the cylinders. I like them to have uh, a certain amount of uh, additional safety built in. And that's it. 
So there you go guys, a few pence worth of parts, very, very effective and also adjustable down so it can uh, hold as much or as little steam as you want um, and being soldered in can't be fiddled with. Very, very important detail that if you are uh, uh, giving this kind of thing as gifts or uh, selling them on eBay or whatever else, basically um, this prevents people from tampering with it in a way that could endanger themselves or others around them. So there you go. Quick and easy. I wish someone had shown me that many, many years ago. That's my gift to you. Um, I certainly uh, would encourage anyone who's making steam models who hasn't realised just how easy these things can be to make to give that a go. Um, any comments, please leave them down below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So take it easy, guys. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.